Hey everyone, I'm Charles Judd, and in this video, I'm wrapping up the first section of the CCIE blueprint found under Network Infrastructure, which is the switched campus section. We're rounding out this section of videos with the concepts of loop guard and root guard, both of which are spanning tree protection mechanisms. So in general, spanning tree is pretty good at creating a loop free topology, but sometimes it does need some help. Sometimes we have strange topologies or maybe we've merged a couple of networks together and created an unusual situation, or maybe we just have a malfunctioning device. Whatever the case may be, it is still possible to have unexpected loops with spanning tree, which is why we have the extra protection offered by loop guard. So here we have a simple topology with three switches and we're going to jump into a lab in just a second, but I want to talk about what happens here with spanning tree switch one is going to be the root bridge in this topology. So both of the interfaces here are going to be designated ports in the forwarding state on switch two interface gig zero slash zero is going to be the root port while gig zero slash one is going to be in the alternate role in the blocking state. On switch three, gig zero slash zero is going to be the root port there. And gig zero slash one is going to be a designated port in the forwarding state. So under normal conditions, the only switch transmitting BPDUs is going to be switch one, the root bridge. The reason switch two has a blocking port in order to prevent a spanning tree loop is that it has received BPDUs from switch one, which is the root bridge, it's received those on interface gig zero slash zero, and it's also received those from interface gig zero slash one. Spanning tree knows this is a problem, so it places gig zero slash one into the blocking state in order to prevent a network loop. Now, of course, we know that, let's say the link between switch one and switch three, let's say that link goes down, Switch two will stop receiving BPDUs on the gig zero slash one interface, and it will make the assumption that there must no longer be the potential for a network loop here. So it would actually move that into the forwarding role. And depending on which iteration of spanning tree you're using and your specific configuration, the amount of time for this convergence to take place will of course vary, but that's the normal operation of spanning tree. However, let's assume that we have a malfunction. Let's say that for some reason, switch three stops transmitting BPDUs over to switch two, and then switch two is going to make the exact same assumption. It's going to assume, okay, this link must be down. So I'm going to move into the forwarding role. Now, if switch three malfunctions in a way that still allows for the hardware to work, this is where we can have a loop condition. And what I mean by that is maybe iOS isn't creating or processing BPDUs as expected, but perhaps the actual interface hardware is still able to forward normal data frames. In that case, we would have switched to forwarding data on both gig zero slash zero and gig zero slash one. And it would be relaying frames around and around the topology and that would create a very bad situation in our network. It would relay those frames around and around, creating a nasty loop. And that's exactly why we would use loop guard. Loop guard is guarding against a situation where an alternate or backup port can become a designated port where it would move into a forwarding state. So with loop guard in place, if BPDUs aren't received on a non-designated port, the port would move into a loop inconsistent blocking state instead of transitioning through the listening, learning, and eventually forwarding state, which would create a potential loop. It's really easy to configure this. And again, we want to configure that on a blocking non-designated port, which in this topology is the gig zero slash one interface on switch two. If we go to switch two and we say show span, just to confirm that, you'll see that gig zero slash one is in the alternate blocking state. And of course, gig zero slash zero is our root port, the closest to our root bridge. Let's also just quickly look at switch one, just to verify things there. 
we see that this is in fact the root bridge. Both of our interfaces are in the designated forwarding state. And of course, switch three, if we look at that, we'll see that the root port is gig zero slash zero and gig zero slash one is in the designated forwarding state. Back on switch two, let's go under interface gig zero slash one, which is our alternate blocking interface. And let's say spanning hyphen tree guard loop. And a really quick way we can test this out is by just enabling one of the features we looked at in a previous video, which is BPDU filtering. We can leave our interface operational while filtering out BPDU messages. So let's say spanning hyphen tree, BPDU filter, enable, and pretty soon we're going to get a console message letting us know that loop guard has kicked in. And there we actually just saw that come in. So we see loop guard block, loop guard is blocking port gig zero slash one. If we break out of here and again say show span, we will see that gig zero slash one is in the blocking state. So loop guard has kicked in and we see that it is also listed in the loop inconsistent state, which is what happens when the loop guard protection mechanism kicks in. If we go back under interface gig zero slash one and we arrow up to that BPDU command, we can prepend that with the no keyword to turn that off. And you see that spanning tree is taking things back to normal. We're told that loop guard has now unblocked that port. So if we say show span again, we'll see things are back to normal. We have an alternate blocking port state. By the way, we can also configure this globally with the command spanning hyphen tree guard loop. So it's essentially the same command as we use under interface configuration mode. But of course we would do that under global configuration mode. The root guard feature is essentially the exact opposite of the loop guard feature. And the goal of root guard is to protect the root bridge placement in the network. We configure this on designated forwarding ports so we can ensure that they do not become non-designated ports. This is fairly commonly seen in a service provider network in order to make sure that the root bridge stays the root bridge. If a customer device with a superior BPDU were able to become the root bridge, well, that would be disastrous in the service provider cloud. So this is commonly used as a layer two protection mechanism. So if we jump back into our topology that we've already been looking at here on switch one, all of our interfaces are in the designated forwarding state. We can, again, just take a quick look at that by saying show span and gig zero slash zero and zero slash one are forwarding. So what we can do here from global configuration mode, we can say interface range gig zero slash zero through zero slash one, and we can enable root guard for both of these interfaces by saying spanning hyphen tree guard root. And we're going to start seeing console messages letting us know that this has been enabled on each of those interfaces. If we go to switch two, and let's say show span, we'll see that we have a root port and a blocking port. So no need to configure root guard on this particular switch. Let's go to switch three and say show span. And we can see that interface gig zero slash one that's in use is a designated port. So we can also enable root guard here to protect our switch. And by doing that, what we're saying is we wanna make sure that we're receiving our BPDUs from the root bridge connected to gig zero slash zero. And if we do receive superior BPDUs from a different bridge on gig zero slash one, that's not desirable and we want that interface to be shut down. So let's go under interface gig zero slash one. And again, really simply spanning hyphen tree guard root. And again, we see our console message letting us know we've enabled root guard for that particular interface. Let's go under interface gig zero slash zero, which is going out to our root bridge. And let's see what happens when we shut down that interface. So we've altered our topology and we're not receiving BPDUs 
over the gig zero slash zero link. And we're now receiving BPDUs over the gig zero slash one link, which of course has root guard enabled because we shut down gig zero slash zero. So we see a message here letting us know root guard is now blocking the port on gig zero slash one. Let's break out and say show span. And we can indeed see that the gig zero slash one interface is in the blocking state. And we can see a message letting us know that this is in the root inconsistent state as we would expect. A few last words about these two mechanisms, just to sum things up under normal operations, when a non designated blocking port stops receiving BPDUs, that port will transition to a designated forwarding state loop guard stops this from happening, protecting against network loops. Also under normal operations, if a root bridge receives a superior BPDU from another switch, the root bridge will transition its designated ports accordingly and give up its root bridge role. Root guard prevents this from happening, ensuring that the desired root bridge remains in place. And you should also know that loop guard and root guard cannot be configured simultaneously on the same interface. So that's a look at both loop guard and root guard. And that also wraps up the CCIE blueprint section dedicated to switched campus technologies. I'm looking forward to jumping into routing concepts next. So I'll see you soon with another new video about what I'm learning. I hope you found this content useful and want to thank you sincerely for watching.